All right, and we are back. What a fun show today. Three in-studio guests. Matt Mitrione, Big Country. I think Matt was mad that we went a little long with Big Country, so I have some, some explaining to do. Um, I do believe he was actually sleeping. Anyway, Mike Goldberg as well. Uh, Tyron Woodley, Rashad Evans, Henry Cejudo. The list goes on and on. Frankie Edgar, but no time to waste. Everyone's uh, favorite segment of the day is Rick's Picks. It starts And now it's time right to now. open up your ears and your minds, MMA fans. It's time for Rick's Picks. Rick's Picks. Yes. Rick's Picks are lots of fun, and his hair is in a bun, because it's, you already know what it is. Rick's, Rick's picks. picks, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's the moment oh, you've all been waiting for. A lot of text for. messages. It's the new craze taking the world by storm. Live from the Vox Studios in beautiful New York City, it's time for Rick's Picks. Boom, there he is, Rick's Picks himself. How are you, Mr. New York Rick? I'm doing well, how about you? I'm doing great. Let me take these Fun off. show today. It's bright. It is bright, it's yeah. It's down. Is it brighter than usual? It's like super bright. I'm like staring into the sun over here. Um, I'm doing well. It was a good show. Just uh, good? Three in- Okay, fine. Yeah. Fair enough. Last week, I, I said like we had a great show. You're like, oh, it's not the best show ever. All right, fair enough, fair enough. Um, no, it was a great show. And uh, three in-studio guests. I feel like we, uh, we delivered on the goods. Not that we don't every week. That's right. But- See, you did it again. You, made you know it- what? I had enough of you. <laughs> I had enough of you undermining every compliment that I have for the show, but no, it was, it was a, it was a great show. No, do do, do um, the thing that you're going to do, you know, you're, you're probably going to do it on Rick's pick. So let's not, well, I actually don't even know, you know, the thing about style bender, uh, yeah, I'm telling, you know, you've been I'm waiting from, for this. No, no, no. Yes. I don't know what you're talking about. I've seen about. a lot of your type doing it over the last couple of days. My type. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, the what, what do you wagon. mean by, what do you mean by you people? You, I, to, I said it. Kickboxing hipsters. <laughs> I called you Listen, out. It's it's one thing you're not gonna you know what you're not gonna drag me into this. Let's do let's do Rick's. All right. We're gonna start. We're gonna start uh, at the. I think this was the open workouts. Yes, this is the open workouts uh, for UFC um, 221. We had Yoel Romero turning it into a salsa dancing party. Can we get uh, can we get some yes. audio on this? Let's hear the. Them moves. Oh, really? No audio. What? They had no audio on this? I can't believe that. That, that, um, that, that, that. I mean, you take a tweet from the UFC, what do you expect? Damn. Um, but I think this was, and, and he's not the first to turn uh, the open workout into a dance party, but I think this is one of the more it almost looked bad, participatory. Right? It, it, almost, it almost looked bad in hindsight had he you know, missed weight and lost. No, because it led to... Okay. Luke Rockhold, oh, yeah. upset, saying that Yoel should have been doing the salsa in the sauna. Some bullshit as usual, says Mr. Rockhold. But this is all old news now. Post-fight. Mm-hmm. Yoel uh, Romero yeah. with the salsa dancing That's emojis. post-fight? That's post-fight. Oh, snap. Whoever's running Yoel's Twitter. Yeah. Tip of the hat to you. Good job, Abraham. Is it Abe? Is it no, no. I, I just, I call people Abraham. That's like it's like bro. That's, that's what you went with. Yeah, it's like bro. Uh, you know? Well done, Abe. Well done, Abe. Um, rubbing it in the face. But I'll say this: maybe a little bit undeserved because I think Rockhold could have been a little more pissy after the fight. But actually, he was pretty respectful. Here's his his tweet after the fight: Respect to Yoel. That man is made of steel. Not wrong. I think it was a hell of a performance by Yoel. But. I mean, he did miss weight. It would have been easy for Rockhold to kind of lay that lay that at the doorstep. Instead, he, t- he was pretty classy, um, saying that uh, Yoel was a tough mf'er. Um, so, hat tip to to Luke um, and to uh, Yoel's uh, social media uh, people for for some good twittering. Yes. Or tweet. okay. Tai Tuivasa, who was featured on Rick's Picks last week, yes. with his oh, this uh, is it, Vanessa Carlton. Doing the shoey. By the way, did you see what happened during the show? I mentioned the guy who made it famous, the the F1 driver, and yeah. he tweeted me. I did not see this. The guy tweeted. Let me one second. One second, one second, one second, one second. Read him. Uh, I'm grabbing it. Sorry, Roseanne tweets me a lot. If you're, if you're yeah, um, if you're if you're listening along, we're watching Tai Tuivasa drinking alcohol out of a shoe. 
Daniel Ricardo. If you're not familiar familiar with a shoe. By the way, uh, one point four million followers. Mr. Ricardo, Formula One driver from Australia. Thanks for the shout out, Ariel. You got the pronunciation bang on too. I'm a regular listener, so I had a little laugh about the shoey, which is delicious, by the way. All the best. How about that? Look at that. Incredible. Would you ever do this? Let's talk about that later. Okay. Let's let's talk about that during the Q&A right. uh, portion of oh, this. Oh, here he is. Next, here we move comes. to uh, Israel Adesanya. Um, so is it oh, okay. Yeah, what's that? What? Ariel? No, is, is, it, is it the last style bender or style bender? Because I've seen both. Um, it's the last style bender, the style bender, it doesn't really matter. It's um it's whatever you want to call them, okay. but don't uh don't call me for dinner. No, uh <laughs> it's 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 I think it's the last style bender, but I think I've also heard, you know, the style bender. Um, but I think the proper um full one is the last style bender. Okay. Um, and here we're taking a look. I think Pedro, the audio should be good um, on this. We're taking a look at. Uh... It's up now. I think it's in, in there, so take it out. Anyway. Well, you know who I am now. Oh yeah. So we're gonna listen Rob to Williams a little bit of this fight. Others turned it down. So I know you have uh, Israel Adesanya's post fight. Take you down 16 times. Take down defense certainly held up for you. Yeah, definite. Uh, I think four guys. Oh, and look at some of his work. Four, four turned us down, and he's the only guy to take Four turned it down. Bang. And they know who they who they're messing with. I'm look like, at that well, face. He must have something up his sleeve, but not tonight. Yeah, Great moment from this fight, this walk, Wilkinson. I made it, uh, clearing a little blood, last, uh, almost spitting it at Israel, who then proceeded to throw some body, do some that. rib roasters. Oh. I know there's a lot of pressure on you. You seem pretty immune to it. What, what did you make of uh, him peeing or um, mimicking? The, the, yeah, the, the peeing on the yard. Yeah. I liked it. It's his personality. Here it is. You dog in the yard. I just all over this cage. Dang, homie. And yeah. If you look at what he did pre fight, he did actually walk in there and mimic urinating on the cage. Oh, really? Um, I missed that. Yeah. Oh, you thought he, he actually mimed it? Oh, no, I saw it. I thought it was after the fact. That, no, no, oh, that no. was before the fact? Okay, yeah, yeah. okay, my bad. That was as he was getting in. Damn. Um, he's fun. He's a fun fighter. I can't wait to talk to him. And I love that he's uh, hashtagging. Oh, this is it. Look, non Jones. <laughs> Here we go, from Izzy on Instagram. Yeah. Hello, newcomers, welcome. If you haven't stalked my page already, and he mentioned that in his post fight, talking about people yeah. uh, stalking him. You should know, I like memes a lot. It's almost Valentine's Day, get familiar. Hashtag I make my own memes, hashtag I do my own stunts, hashtag non Jones. And then he has the hipster Ariel meme. Um, Wait, so can I, am I crazy, or did I feel like he was taking a shot at me here? I mean, it is a hipster Ariel meme. Do you think really he was? I'll say this, he's he makes his own memes. He's a smart he's a smart Damn. dude. You think he, that just that just occurred to me right now. Is wait, is Hipster Ariel a real thing? That's a that's a meme that exists prior oh. to, to this. What is it? But what is it? It's basically hers the, the meme is you insert something, the the text in impact font being um something that a hipster would say, and it's this picture. Why? Because she's a hipster in this picture. It's hipster Ariel. But is that like a real thing? Like this is a meme that existed prior to this. No, meme. I know, I know, I know. But is this taken from? Like, is she ever wearing glasses in any of the movies? No, but the, in the meme it. she is. Yeah. So is he trying to like? Is he trying to say like, oh, here's Ariel, like Johnny Come Lately? I mean, is there double knows? meaning to this? Who knows? There might be. That's it. Banned. But it is a great meme, and it's a continuation of his personality, which I think mm. everybody's kind of gotten exposed to. It was nice. It was nice to see the MMA world paying attention. Yeah, yeah, I bet. To, to Israel. Okay, also from Australia, um, John Wayne Parr. Is that BJ Uriah Penn? Favorite, and BJ Penn. This one's from Uriah Faber's Instagram. Okay. Um, hanging out. Now, I think this is old, by the way. Yeah, I think this is, uh, this is a throwback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's coming back to Australia. Yeah, yeah. Um, but if you give me an excuse to put BJ Penn. Sure. Nah. He looks great. In Rick's picks. Um, I will. Uh, but John Wayne Parr and uh, I believe Uriah did make it down to He did, yeah. He was uh, cornering uh, Teruto Ishihara. Ishihara. 
and John Wayne and uh, Chris Weidman getting some work done. Oh my God. In Australia. Chris Weidman, I was making fun of him. I mean, it was just like a love affair. Uh, on, on, him and John oh Wayne? Oh my Lord. All week long. Hugging. Oh, it's so great. Enough already. Yeah, you know. Enough. I'm, I'm here for the bromance. Yeah. I'm here for the bromance. But speaking of love and there it is. Uh, relationships. The baby, uh, Robert Whitaker's new baby. God ble- uh, God always has a plan. Sorry. I was gutted. I couldn't defend my belt at UFC Perth, but I've just been blessed with a little girl that stole my heart. My wife did so well. Angel. And I couldn't be a prouder husband or dad. Welcome to the world. To uh, Robert Whitaker's new daughter. Um, you know, I'd say that's a good consolation prize. Amazing. He would have missed it. not being able to, to defend uh, his belt. Also, continuing the Rick's Picks theme of children of fighters. Mini Blessed. Mini Blessed, just styling. <laughs> just amazing. killing it on the skateboard. There's there's more to this. Again, Tagboard doesn't let me show all of them. Wow. But go check out Max Holloway's uh, Instagram for more of Mini Blessed styling with the skateboard. Photo shoot fresh, as they say. And profiling. Oh. Now we move to fight bookings. Yes. This one... This one from the realm of, of fantasy, uh, Tyron Woodley versus Justin Bieber, posted by Rafael Dos Anjos, who has stepped up his social media game. Hashtag fake news in the corner there. Uh, if you want a money fight, why not Justin Bieber? He has a lot of followers. It'd be good for your legacy. Where's the fake hashtag news? Hashtag fight RDA. In the top corner, oh, hashtag I fake it, news. Um, and hashtag uh, on the bottom, Woodley comedian. Um, what are the chances he actually made this? I did see some tweets. There were people accusing him of having Ali run his Twitter. No. At which he said Ali not his manager. is not his manager Yeah, that's uh, any longer. Um, but do I know if it's RDA running the social? It's impossible to tell these days. But I'm in for it. You know what I'm was here weird about it. it? Can I tell you what was really weird about this? It says World Welterweight Championship, Saturday, July 16th. Okay? First of all, that's not a UFC event date. <laughs> Uh, July 7th, the 16th is a Monday. It's not a, it's not a Saturday. Yeah. Like, what? What is that? Maybe they were intentionally doing like a fake date because That's it's a weird. fake thing. I don't know. I mean, really? And also, ju- look, Justin Bieber's ranked number one. Okay, fair enough. But like the fake date just seems weird. I agree. But it's all it's all weird. Yeah, I guess. Um, but I'm here for it. I'm here for the the Rafael Dos Anjos who's, who's photoshopping. Uh, welcome to the to the Photoshop world. But we do have some real fight announcements. Okay. Here's a tweet from Ariel Helwani. Oh. Cyborg versus Kunitskaya. Edgar versus Ortega set for UFC 222. Uh, two big fights. Like both of them. You like it. You know yeah, Kunitskaya. I, mean, I do. Can she I'm hang familiar. at 145? Um, I, I think she can. I think... Uh, but it's the same thing that that hap- is going to continue to happen with Cyborg. There aren't so uh, a ton of true 145ers out there for her. Yeah. Um, Kunitskaya, though, um, after winning the title, the bantamweight title for Invicta, California recommended she move up. Sure. Um, so I don't think it's necessarily a situation where we have, you know, a bantamweight going in against a featherweight. I think it'll be close in size here. Um, I don't. Ha- I don't hate it. She's rangy. I think this is a good fight. I just. I, I, I like this fight. I mean, we're the hardest of the hardcore. Are they going to promote her? She's got a highlight reel that's promotable. Yeah. That's for sure. Um, she armbarred, famously, uh, Tanya Evinger. Well, sort of. To capture the, the Bantamweight title. And then the decision was reversed. Yeah, we don't have to. We don't, the have, to, <laughs> we don't have to go over that, right? She armbarred. Why? No, I'm just saying, oh, like, for the sake of this promotion. Yeah. No, I, look. The armbar happened, regardless of, of the result. The, the commission ended up overturning it because the referee acted improperly in, in their estimation. But um, she is game. She is a tough fighter. She's gone. She she's shown she can finish, but she's also shown she can go five rounds. Going five rounds recently with um, Raquel Paolui. Um, I think this is a, this is a viable opponent. But there will this will this will always be a conversation. Is is this person a forty five er? Is this person worthy of fighting Cyborg? I think in this case we do have a matchup that I'm interested in seeing. The best was Dana on FS1. He's like uh, Cyborg is going to fight Yana Kunitskaya. <laughs> Look, it's and then it oh, says nothing, on. and then it says nothing. It's a difficult... No, but, like, the easiest thing you could say is, yeah, she's the former Invicta... Bantamweight Yeah, champ. I mean, it's like it's not like you even have to, like, run down her, her record or anything. Um, and we also get, on that same card, Edgar versus Ortega, which I also love. Yes, that's a good um, one. Obviously, I think Edgar is worthy of a title shot, but I like I think Ortega with a win is also um, in that conversation. So I, I'm, I'm okay with this fight. And uh, kudos to Frankie, stepping up as always. 
Also announced Invicta back on March 24th. Strawweight, vacant strawweight title being defended. Janisa Moranjan versus uh, Verna Janjiroba. Full card now out. And this one from, I think it was Friday. Uh, Thursday. Correct me if I'm wrong. It was Thursday night? Okay, Thursday night. Um, Roy Jones Jr. in his final boxing match, we we think, for now. The problem with this quote-unquote retirement fight is that like he never really committed to the retirement. He kept talking about Anderson Silva. This is pretty badass, though, what he's doing right here. Yeah, this this move right here, if you're, if look you're away. listening, he's looking away, yeah. playing with the mouthpiece a little bit, taking it out of the mouth, and then... Is that the mouthpiece boop. or his tongue? Mouthpiece. It looks like his tongue. That's a tongue. Ariel. It's a, it's a mouthpiece. That's not a mouthpiece. Is it? Maybe it's his tongue. It's his tongue. Uh, 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 uh. Over the top of the mouthpiece? How's, yeah, maybe. Maybe over the top. Under. Mouthpiece is just on top. Yeah. It may be too difficult to do it with the mouthpiece. It looks That's weird. That's his tongue. The, the, Look at it. Going side to side. Yeah. It's 100% his tongue. Sticking out the tongue. And then boop. Legend. Yeah. I feel like yeah. it's, I feel like maybe it's retirement. Oh, it's 100% Although retirement. I, Anderson's not coming back anytime soon, but it just, it would have been nice to, you know, not only do we do that, you know, you know, we look forward to working with you guys again. All right, all right. Y'all must have forgot. Bang. Y'all must have forgot. Oh, Eddie was there? Here we have Eddie Alvarez posting uh, an Instagram photo from the Philadelphia Eagles championship parade. Another bandwagon Eagles fan, huh? Huh? Wow. Damn. I don't think Eddie's going to be happy next nah. time he comes on. We know what happens when he, you know, is unhappy. He uh, boycotts the show. Yeah, I know. We just smoothed it over. Don't ruin yeah, this, yeah, Ariel. Yeah. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo linking up with Khabib Nurmagomedov here exchanging a jersey. I think we actually have video, let's see, giving each other gifts. Oh, yeah, this is great. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Look at this guy, Khabib, rubbing elbows with Ronaldo. How about that, huh? Uh, Real Madrid saw that he was such a big fan. They invited him out. He's boys. Look at them just. But here's the thing. Ronaldo gets around. Is Ronaldo the Drake of MMA? You know how Drake just like pops up at every basketball? Well, event. like he's always cozying up to, you know, the hot team or the hot player. We, we recall... Ronaldo checking in with Connor before the second uh, Nate Diaz fight, and now here he is on Team Habib. What's up with that? Yes. Also friends with Badr Hari. Um, he's he's deep in the in the fight game. Yeah, I like it. Shiano, fan of the fight game. But here exchanging gifts with uh, Habib Nurmagomedov. What's this? Nate Diaz checking in, <laughs> not to announce a fight, okay. but to highlight. I, I don't know if you've seen this. This is great. Look, wait, wait, right there. Boom. That one frame, that one second right there was what he posted. It was him in the background. If you if you weren't watching closely, you'll miss it. But in the latest Wiz Khalifa video, there's a there's footage of Nate Diaz fighting. Wow. That's the that's the shout out. Damn. But I think Wiz Khalifa just released something called Captain an album. Uh, and then you have Nate Diaz in the back fighting. But I know Wiz is uh, into the fight game. We featured him on Rick's Picks uh, earlier or middle of last year, uh, getting some training in. And this is our last Rick's pick. Uh, we had video last week. This week we have Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson delivering the uh, the face punch to Jamie Foxx, who you, I mean, you went out of yeah. your way to slam. You him. mean the washed up Jamie Foxx? Oh my God. You know what? I can't, I can't have We this. had a debate uh, before the show. Who's a bigger star in today's America, Jamie Foxx or Odell Beckham Jr.? It's not even close. Yeah, it's Odell Beckham Jr. No. It's not even close. I didn't see Jamie Foxx on any Super Bowl commercials. That was an NFL commercial. Yeah, but they chose him. Of all the players in the NFL, they chose OBJ. Oh, so is Eli Manning the, the trendsetter? Is Eli Manning He's pretty the, damn uh... popular. I'd pick him over Jamie Foxx too. Oh my God, you're crazy. If Jamie Foxx Jamie Fox came out- Oscar-winning yeah. actor. For what? A music. Uh, has he won a Grammy? I don't even know if he's won a Grammy, but he's a great musician. Yeah, right. Uh, Oscar-winning actor. For what movie? Ray. No, someone just said it. I heard you. Yeah. That's some kind of BS Hey, Ariel, there. I know you don't watch movies, but we all kind of know this. No, Ray. Yeah. No chance. What, 
What? What are you talking about? Are you saying he didn't win it? Are you saying what, what are I'm you saying? saying you didn't know that, Ariel? Just because you're out of the out of the loop. See, this is you not. This is exactly what it is. You not knowing that he won an Oscar for that is exactly why you're not the one to determine who's more popular. If Jamie in Fox culture came right out now. with a pair of shoes, sneakers. Who sells more? Him or a, or a sports star? Yeah. <laughs> if Odell Beckham or Jamie yeah. Foxx came out with a movie, yeah. who does more box office? Probably Odell. <laughs> <laughs> is the movie him dancing with Eli Manning? Oh, did, is it is it a remake? Uh, is it a remake of? Uh, did you know that uh, Jamie Foxx and Katie Holmes are dating and expecting? I didn't know they're expecting, but they've been dating for a while. Damn, I knew that. I didn't know that. That's a strange couple. From Tom Why? Cruise to Jamie Foxx? I don't know. Okay, how about this? They were co-stars in Collateral, another movie I'm sure you've never you heard seen. of it. Um, yeah. Jamie Foxx, how many followers on Instagram? Oof, um, two million. 4.5. Wow. Odell, how many followers? I don't know. 10 Five. million. Yeah, that's, Ten. Your, that's your measurement. More than double. That is pretty impressive. That is pretty damn. Good. Odell's kill. Odell, he's bigger than you think. He's killing the game. But no, uh, Jamie Fox is still a bigger star. There's no, there's no, there's no question. Did you, did you see the message I just sent you? Yeah, yeah. We can get that done. We can do it. I want to ask our, our our guest, our surprise guest, this question. Okay, let's do it. Okay, we're gonna do it. in Little one surprise. Minute right Little surprise for the after hour folks. Um, you know, we like to talk to everyone on today's program. We like to talk to everyone, and in a matter of moments, we are going to be joined by one half of the. Headlining act for Sunday's UFC Austin card. Yes, we don't often do guests on the after hour, and we are running out of time, but I did want to talk to the one and only Yancey Medeiros. He is fighting Donald Cerrone on Sunday night, FS1, Austin, Texas. He's an island boy. He's a brada. He's got great mahalo, great aloha. And he is kind enough to be joining us on the phone. Is he there? Do we have Yancey? Uh, aloha. Aloha, Yancey. How are you? I'm doing good, man. Just Hawaiians getting adjusted to this cold weather in Austin. Cold <laughs> weather in Austin. I don't feel bad for you in Austin. Well, what's the weather like over there? Uh, it's like 40, I think. 40, 40. Oh, damn. Really? <laughs> Snap. It's not like New York, but yeah, yeah, it's cold. There's a cold front going on now. Wow. Okay, my bad. By the way, yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you for joining us. It's great. I, and I'm sorry we got to you a little late. The show went a little long, but I did want to talk to you before this big fight for you. Um, th this is a big deal, headlining a show against a legend like Donald Cerrone. Why are you there so early? Usually, um, is it because of the time difference? Because this is a Sunday card. I thought maybe you'd go out on Wednesday. Uh, yeah, usually uh, usually coming out from Hawaii, we try and get a little bit more time acclimating to the time and the weather. We didn't know what Austin was going to bring. And obviously it brought some cold weather with us. So I'm glad we came a little early. We try and do that too, just to decompress, um, get ready for the fight week. We do a lot of, you know, try and do the sightseeing, I guess. Every okay. time when we, go, we, when we come to like the venues, it's like too short. We're just cutting weight, doing work. And we, now, now we try and come a little bit earlier with the team and indulge in the culture where wherever we are. Just, you know, okay. make that, yeah. give it a family look. Uh, we, we were having a debate before you came on. Who's more popular in, in, in today's America, Jamie Foxx or Odell Beckham Jr.? Who's your pick? I say Odell Beckham, no brainer. What do you say? Um, man, come on, Jamie Foxx, man, what? he's a well-rounded individual. Get that out guy of here. acts, he sings, he acts. Is it because you're being biased because he's from New York, bro? No, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> come on, Odell. Odell is a trendsetter. The guy wears like crazy clothes. People love him. He's got the crazy hair. He's on Super Bowl commercials. What does Jamie Foxx do? Everything else. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> yeah. No, but I ain't hating on Odell at all, man. I just, I think Jamie, that's one of the guys I'd love to meet, Jamie Foxx, right? He's a man of many talents. Great wow. actor. Wow. That's your guy. You like Jamie Foxx? Yeah, I think, I think he's a good key. He's a good, he's a good actor. He's a good all actor. Right. I've always enjoyed, I enjoy his films. But I uh, definitely want to meet Odell Beckham, too. He is a trendsetter. Also a very definitely. cool guy. Um, yeah, hey, very I, cool I wanted guy. to ask you, Yancey, this, this was kind of like news a little bit a couple of weeks ago. When they came out with the poster, uh, we, we had uh, Cerrone with the American flag. We had Derek Lewis with the American <laughs> flag. But no American flag for Hawaii's own Yancey Medeiros. Right. What was up with that? It's all good, man. Hawaii has his own kingdom. So we have <laughs> our own flag. 
but you should have put it on my shoulder. But it's all good, you know. <laughs> did you think it was you weird? They they, no, nah, they put the Pacific Ocean in the back. <laughs> did they really? You watch, it's all blue. Oh, okay. yeah, that's the right. back. That's the Pacific Ocean. They got the Hawaiian wow. in the water. Okay, all right, fair <laughs> enough. So you weren't offended. Hey, we make we. Nah, I mean it is what it is. We make I make I turn the I turn the negative into a positive. It keeps it a low vibe. Go ahead. Okay. Um, what was your reaction when you got the call to headline? This is your first UFC main event. What was your reaction when you got that call? Uh, let's do it. Uh, I'm your huckleberry. I mean, I tell everybody the story came about. Call, uh, my manager sent me a screenshot, Cowboy, asking me, I believe it was Christmas Eve, he did a post or something about him asking for a fight. My, my manager screenshot that. I was like, hell yeah. Tell him, call up Sean Shelby. Tell him I'll fight on March 3rd. Called Sean Shelby up. Came back with a main event February 18th. I was like, yeehaw. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> so what, you, uh, initially you wanted to fight on the same card as Max? I honestly, I, I didn't know Max was going to fight. Uh, he was doing some traveling, so I didn't get to talk to him. I didn't know he was um, going to gonna fight that car uh, on that car. And I just was, I wanted to fight on a Vegas card, something domestic, a little bit closer to home. I've been going yeah. to Detroit. I went to Brazil. So I wanted something a little bit more close. Okay. And un- unfortunately, Max got injured and, you know, he's going through his rehab and he's in good spirits, but you just keep this Hawaiian wave continuing in Austin. <laughs> The, the 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 main event slot is very well deserved. Three in a row, um, three straight finishes, arguably the fight of the year in your last fight, a phenomenal fight. And this all coincides with you, you know, going back up to 170. Why, like, what's what's working for you now? Why do you, this is your longest winning streak in the UFC. You haven't had um, three in a row in the UFC. You had prior earlier in your career. Why is it all working for you now? I just think the, the move up, and the move up in the weight classes is just less of a strain for me in every aspect, emotionally, physically, financially. I mean, if I was making McGregor money, I'd be hiring a nutritionist and I'd make that 155. I'd be in tip top shape. But Hawaii's expensive. Hawaiian loves to eat. And I ain't got I ain't got that type of money. So I mean, we make the adjustments and I feel that my coaches and everybody around me is just I think I could take more damage, as you can see. The last fight, the plan wasn't to block all those punches with my face, but you know, I can. I I feel like I'm a, I'm a lot I'm a I'm a lot more durable. I'm a lot more durable. Not that I like to take punches, but you know, I can dish it. I can I can take it, but I can dish it all also. And I just feel that Walter Wade. I don't want to be. I wanted to show last year. I wanted to show you um, UFC and everybody in the Walter Wade that I'm relevant that I belong in this weight class. And so I did that this year. I want to make moves and show, show UFC that I'm here to be an investment, not an asset. I want oh. to be an investment to this company and I need them. And this is the type of moves they're going to do. And they gave me this main title shot. And yes, you know, yes. I mean, I feel like I need to be at, I feel like I need to be at the top and I'm going to strive to be there. I train with martial arts, the best martial artists in the world. I train with world champs and, you know, I just feel that this is, this is my calling. This is my time. And, they're gonna give me this situation. Everybody out there is talking about what they deserve, what they need, what they what they want to get paid, and all that. And I'm just talking with my hands. And UFC is gonna keep giving me these opportunities, and I'm gonna keep swinging. I love it. Um, um, on the flip side, Donald hasn't had that kind of success since moving up to 170. Where do you feel like he's at? You know, you just had the fight against Darren Till. He's lost three in a row. This is kind of new territory for him. Do you feel like he's on the 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 downslide of his career? Not at all. Not at all. I'm expecting, I'm expecting the, the best Donald Cerrone there is. Uh, I feel I've, I've taken, I've taken loss and I feel that that only makes me, that only makes me want to get better. Yes. He lost three times, but he lost against three good, good. He lost against three hammers. He lost against three, three good fighters, man. You know, it's all top contenders and they're all, they're all in, they're all in the top 10 or even, even higher than him in rank. So, I ain't taking anything away from, from Donald. I'm expecting the best Donald Cerrone. Like I said, I'm your Huckleberry and I'm going to go in there and going to go to, I'm going to bring my guns to this gun battle and we're going to be swinging. <laughs> um, so as I said, your last fight, fight of the year contender in the end, I feel like it, it on most people's lists, it, it lost out to, to Gaethje Johnson. Do you feel like you were robbed? Do you feel like in the end, your fight should have been the, the fight of the year? I I actually have no no I I didn't feel any it just if people felt that way people felt that way I'm over there 
to give my heart. This is a business of entertainment, and I'm there to entertain, not take too much beating, but I mean, give yeah. give the crowd entertainment. And yeah, I've seen the, the, the that fight, and that was a war too. Brother, they were just standing in the middle, and they were going at it. So, I mean, hats off to both of them. We both want money, <laughs> so that is it, true. It, it is what it is. It is what it is. If people felt that that was the better fight, yeah, that was the better. That was the better fight. It doesn't. It doesn't matter to me. I don't get bitter. I get better. Yes, and, and I mean, in the end, you can you can't go wrong with with either fight. Two tremendous fights. That one was. I mean, just watching it. Um, live, uh, like the, the the first round, the back and forth, and how you were able to withstand that, and then eventually finish him, just insane stuff. I'm I'm assuming you'd prefer a, a, like a maybe a little less of a of a brutal like like you'll you'll take a 10 second finish in this one, right? You don't want to go through all that again. Oh, most death. You know, like I said, this is the business of entertainment, and I'm trying. If I ain't trying to punch your neck off, I'm trying to get your head off. I'm trying to rip it off and choke it off. So I mean, less damage. More um, give more damage, take less. Um, take and take less damage. That's that's the game plan. <laughs> uh, is is Max going to this fight with you? No, unfortunately not. I think you know he's he's recovering from his injury and he's got some okay. things he's got to deal with personally. So he he's gonna stay home right now. There's a bunch of other teammates fighting on different venues on different cards. So you know he's still being a team player and he's supporting the team. And all my coaches are here for me. So. We needed some, some. We needed some guys back at home, and Max is going to hold it down for the team back at home I, right now. I, I do believe your friend Nate Diaz is going to be there, right? Yes, sir. He'd be there. Wow. Good so yeah, I mean, you could. He, he's he's headlined a, a show or two. So having that experience, having him, you know, uh, in Austin, that has to help, right? Oh, most definitely. I feel like the more family, the more better it is for me. And Nate, Nate's more than just a friend. He's a family. He's he's definitely a brother to me, and I'm just happy. Him, Gilbert, a lot a lot of the guys that I've looked up to growing up that's made me a better martial artist is coming here, and it's just they're here to they're, they're here to ride this Hawaiian wave too. They surf too, Ariel. That's right. I know. We need to get the you you win this fight, you get the first headlining fight, and then finally, I feel it in 2018. It's happening. I feel like that show is happening that we that we keep hearing you guys oh, talk man. about. I'm I'm hoping so. I just get get a UFC connect with Hawaii, make those negotiations happen, so I can give back to my island. Amazing, uh, Yancy. Thank you for doing this, and, and and sorry for keeping you waiting. But I'm happy we were able to to squeeze you in at the very end of the show. I wish you the best. I can't wait for it. Very happy that you're getting this opportunity to headline a show. And and if you ask me, this show's better than the one that they were charging 65 bucks for on Saturday night. And this one is free on cable television on 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 Sunday from from Austin, Texas. I believe that. You believe that yeah. as well. Look at the lineup. Um, yeah, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make them believe it because I'm like I said, this is a, this is a business of entertainment, and I'm here to entertain Ariel. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna entertain Austin and the rest of the world February 18th. I look forward to it. Thank you, Yancy. All the best to you. And we'll talk to you after the fight. Thank you, Ariel. Aloha. You have a great day. Aloha, mahalo, my friend. There he is, Yancy Madero, stopping by, headlining February 18th. So he ends up being the uh, the judge and jury. Uh, he claims that Jamie Foxx is more popular. Also, uh, some other people weighing in, uh, saying that Jamie Foxx, our, 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 our video editing guru, shooting guru, Casey also says, never heard of Odell Beckham. I don't know who these people are that don't believe in Odell Beckham, but... Um, Listen. Yeah. The, the, the ruling is in. Yeah, yeah, it's, you, can't fight, you can't fight the people. How about this from Tim Elliott? Henry, he tweeted... Henry Cejudo. Henry, yeah. I am extremely sorry that I beat up your team on tough. I am sorry you are so sensitive and cannot take a joke. I am sorry that you are five foot two inches tall and have still missed weight several times. There is no benefit fighting a boring wrestler that can't make weight. I'd say that that would fall under the shots fired category. I want to see this fight. Also, weirdly enough, he retweeted the video. Yeah, well, he's giving the context. Right. That's he's a good journalist. Some other people, want, yeah, I get. I, I mean, oh, uh, okay. No, here's here's from two days ago. Okay, so there you go. He's. I like that fight. He's not a fan. And yeah, it seems like he's he's very not interested. I'm interested. Okay. I'd like I'd like to see that fight. Okay, let's answer some questions before we go because we can't be yep. here all night. All right, I'm sorry, but we just can't. I know. I'm. I'm I apologize for uh, for. Keeping I'm happy we got Yancey in. He deserved to be in first main event. Oh, I'm I'm thrilled yeah. we got Yancey. Great timing. In. Um, because I mean, the man has the man has taste. Yeah. He, he knows what he's talking about. Okay, fancy. 
you know what? There was a character on the Jamie Foxx show named Fancy. We brought in Yancey to settle the Yancey, Yancey. How about that? Um, would you approve of a single card having both Robert Whitaker versus Joel Wait, you didn't Joel do question Lamar? of the day. You're right. I didn't. Let me just read it out. Yeah. I do have it up here, but you're right. MMA Hour question of the week. Of the week, sorry. Who should Robert Whitaker fight next? The options were Yoel Romero, yep. Chris Weidman, yep. Jacare Souza, yep. and Kelvin Gastelum. Who wins? With 27,302 votes, Yoel Romero, 68%, Weidman 14, Gastelum 10, and Jacare pulling up the rear with 8%. Wow. So how about that? The fans say, miss weight? <sighs> Screw your missing weight. Well, I think... Because it was for an interim title, it's almost like ball don't lie. That was number one contendership, regardless. Does it really need to? Does he really need to be penalized and not fight for the title? My answer would be no. I think Yoel Romero. You give it to Yoel. Should get the title shot. Um, just because I don't feel like anybody else has staked a claim to it. I, I I think any of these answers is a good one. None more than the other, to be completely honest. Yoel just being the most recent and the freshest. Yeah. There's no great answer. There is no good answer. It kind of sucks when they have to shot. do like the immediate, like, I, like I, I wish, it's sort of like it's that It's not Aldo. immediate though. Well, no, no, he, for, for he Whitaker, fought. for Whitaker. For Whitaker it is, but he fought to get there. This is like the Aldo Holloway situation. But did, wait, did Al, did Holloway fight anybody? No. Yeah, so that's the thing though. I want to see him fight someone new, but there Al, isn't anyone, so. Aldo and Holloway both didn't fight anybody between there. No, 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 they didn't, but you just, you in the first title defense, I wanted to see him fight someone fresh like Luke Rockhold. It was I, perfect. I have more of a problem with it if Yoel didn't sure, earn his way sure, back. Sure, 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 And I think he No, did. I mean, he earned it. Yeah, I, as far as the actual fight is concerned, yeah. you know, he, he gets penalized. What do, what do you think of, this leads to that yeah. next question yeah. that Mark uh, Luther asked, what do you think of Robert Whitaker versus Yoel Romero? On the same card, you get the rematch that we've all wanted, Rockhold versus Jacare Souza. I was kind of hoping for Weidman Jacare. That's a fight I've been wanting to see so, for a very long so time. Then, Rockhold, I'm sorry, Whitaker versus Romero. Whitaker versus Rockhold versus Weidman. No, no, no. Jacare versus Weidman. Oh, sorry, Jacare versus the fight Weidman. I want to see. How about Rockhold versus Gastelum then? All six of that. the. I don't hate that. I mean, who knows how long A, Romero's going to be out, B, Whitaker's going to be out, and then of course, well, Rockhold just got knocked out. We saw the news from uh, Romero's team, not a broken leg. Yeah, but still. Just a hurt leg. No, I, I'm, I'm saying I, he could definitely could be out for an extended amount of time, but not as bad as we thought. A lot of a lot of people initially yeah, I mean, thinking the, that it was very in a perfect bad. world. I love that. I, so those, I love when, those when, when they do like. I, I wish they would do more. You know, all one division. Yeah. Because yeah, then everything times out. out together, and you could really focus. Yep. I love that. Just Weidman Jacare is the fight, in my opinion. I want to see Rockhold and Jacare. I've, I've I been craving it, too, it, but I really want to see, force. especially like on the ground. Jacare's jiu-jitsu against Weidman's wrestling. What a fight! What is 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 uh, Rockhold a slouch on the ground? Is no, he? but he's not an all-American wrestler. I would. I, I'll say this. Maybe I'm. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm going on a limb. I'd say Rockhold's better on the ground. It's just you know, Weidman was kind of like this super you know uh, quick learner when it came to jiu-jitsu. His grappling. Remember early yeah. on, he was getting all those guillotines and stuff. I don't know. I saw, no, I always no to doubt say. about it. Uh, Weidman, a really, really good grappler. I just think Rockhold is kind of known essentially as a striker. I think he's a better grappler. I think he should have probably been pressing the action a little bit more to, to get it to the ground. Now, make no mistake about well, it. Didn't take it Yo Romero ground, is not yeah. is not exactly a guy who's who's uh, just going to be there for the takedowns. But I think I think Rockhold is one of the best grapplers in the division and and should be going to that. Um, this time next year, Scott Wiley asks, Mark Hunt is A, with the UFC, B, with another organization, C, retired. I mean, if he could get through the fights, I'm going to go with B. Honestly, he'd be perfect for the Belter tournament. Perfect. Yep. Absolutely perfect. Dan Hardy on Twitter suggesting kickboxing. I think mm. I think th if if there's an opportunity for somebody to take down Mark Hunt, now I think Curtis Blades is is a specific example. A great wrestler. That's his bread and butter. He's going to go to that after. Especially, I mean, the people who are upset with the performance from Curtis Blades, he stood there, took no. the beating, and then decided he'd be an absolute idiot. He'd be a, he'd be stupid yeah. to stand there. It was a perfect game plan by him. Um, in fact, I thought he stood too long with him. He took some shots that he didn't need to take. Um, but I think if there's an opportunity for Mark Hunt to stay standing. 
that's that's where you got to go. Yeah. You, you got to you got to keep it on the feet. Question of the week from Mr. Sped. It's his question of the okay, week. Okay, okay. Who should Israel, uh, the last oh, element here, Adesanya yes. fight next? I think this is a very important thing because it seems like we have what many people are considering a star on our hands, slowly, but this matchmaking is going to be important. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Slow your so roll. Who, don't who do get you like all crazy on us. We were talking well, about this before so, the show. Um, please don't get all crazy. Don't push him too fast. Don't yep. make him fight in two weeks. Like, let's just chill out here. We've got something good. Let's market him the right way. He's fun. Um, you know, we were looking at, like, and and I hope you don't, like, we were, I was saying, okay, what, yeah. you know, Adesanya against Machida. I like it. Too soon? Maybe too soon. I th- I think there's a, st- a step between. Uriah Hall? Because Uriah Hall is ranked above Machida, believe it or not. Yeah. I'm just saying, I don't even want a ranked guy. Just g- give me five, six unranked. Who's who's like 15? Who's 15 right now? Brad Tavares. That's a grinder, man. That's not a good fight for Israel. Yeah. I don't like that right away because I think Brad is going to mix in the I, takedowns. I, I think that. I think you need to match um, Adesanya favorably. Not because I don't think he's capable. No. I thought his takedown dif- defense favorably. looked pretty good. Let but you need go. to match him favorably. Let him go 6-0 in the UFC. What's the big get deal? get that, that momentum. Yep. Why not? Build them up. It's okay. They yeah, need people. I think it's okay they, for they've that. They've got something special here. Build them up. Don't get the too- problem is you have to protect them from himself because he's going to want to say, "I want to test my wrestling. I want to show everybody that I can do this. I want to." You have to. You have to bring them along so you can build up that. That you know. Look the the Conor McGregor. The way he came up, it worked. Yeah, it worked. Slowly. It got it got people interested. There were there was a clear progression. You need to do that. And I and I think Israel is a, is a star. Like a game. CR. Great fight, Gonna striker, stand up, another right? another stand up fighter. Yep. Just slowly, slowly, slowly. You know, I don't want. Just don't get too crazy. Don't get too. We've got something here. Please don't mess it up. Like no Brunson. No, None of that. that's a that's a nightmare. Yeah. You can't you can't do that. You, you got to build up now down the line. Sure. Yeah, let's yeah. let's see it. In five six but, fights. But now build it up. it's time. You, you give them you give them somebody who's going to stand there. Trevor Smith. Trade. I don't know. One of those guys. Hot sauce. I like it. Yeah. Okay. Which is the grosser celebration? Bam Bam to Ivasa uh, doing the shoey, taking the beer out of someone's yeah, shoes, yeah. or that Eagle fan the Eagle who fan. reached down. Come on. Like, I, like, you know. Is there an amount of money I no, could pay you to no. do a shoey? To yes, do a shoey? Yes, yes. The dung? No. What? Yeah, I, I, I'm with you on that. Shoey, what's the price? What's the price tag? My own shoe or someone else's shoe? Somebody else's. That's the problem. That's the real problem. <laughs> you don't, and you know what? You don't know if they've been walking on it all day yeah. or are they wearing socks? Been off their feet. Are they wearing socks or no? They're socks? wearing socks. Oh. They're wearing socks. Um, but you don't know. Look, they could have been doing laps before they got there. Ten thousand. Wow, that number is lower than I thought. Really? You know what? Good for you. The dung. I mean, zero. zero. Not a chance. Yeah, I, I feel like throwing up right now just thinking about I it. I couldn't do it. But I mean, Did that really happened. I haven't seen the clip. Oh, it happened. Legit. And the, you know what? It wasn't it staged. Happened, it happened, I think, in the Cavaliers. In, like, a Cleveland guy did this first. Well, that doesn't surprise and me. And then they rep... <laughs> I'm not from Cleveland. I don't... <laughs> um, they did it in Cleveland. And then I think this guy replicated uh, that, which is, like, inspired. Philly, okay. you're, you're, in, yeah, you're touched. Yeah. But uh, there's no amount for me for that. But 10000 That's that's lower than I thought. I mean... Our boy did it for free. Well, I mean, he's he's paying. He's Freaking paying. Ricardo is winning races and doing it. So I mean, I feel like ten thousand is a good deal. Tradition, tradition yeah. trumps. If anyone trumps wants that. to pay me ten thousand dollars to drink out of a shoe, I will do it. How about that? <laughs> there it is. We got we got to put this to the sponsorship team. Yeah, sponsorship <laughs> team. We can't get a single sponsor on their show, let alone uh, freaking me drinking out of a shoe. If we get 10, I think we can put 10 G's on this. I'm excited about the prospect. I will drink out of the shit for 10,000. That's how desperate we are for sponsors. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to message Ben right after the show. We used to get, you know, this thing, that thing, mattress. Okay. Uh. Forget 10 G's. Okay. This is the question mm-hmm. from Kid Holland. If the Bills won wow. the Super Bowl, would you do a shoey? I would do that for free. You would do for it? For free. Austin, are you in too? Austin back here would do it with you. I, I, I'll do two shoes. I'll do two left feet for you. How about that? <laughs> Man. Yeah. So that tells me that you'd pay more than 10K easy for a Bill Super Bowl. Like, honestly, for that joy, 
There's no money. Like you would put up everything. Nick's number one. I'll okay. be honest. Nick's number. Yep. Nick's would give me the greatest joy because I I just feel like I, I've I've hurt so much, especially last week. Chris Stapps pulls off his shoe after Stop the game. It. Ariel, oh. drink oh. up. <laughs> Suck his toes. Oh <laughs> what are you talking about? Pulls off the drink up. Oh, kiss his feet. Six twelve. Yeah. This is this is where we're at. Um. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh my god. Just thinking about it. I mean, last week was so depressing. Not only does he go down with the ACL. We've got the Billy Hernan Gomez trade. I mean, don't get me started at this. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel bad for any basketball team out there that's struggling. Yeah, because yeah, 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 yeah. Don't worry. G- give it six months. You'll be there. Less. Um, We've got a young core. Yeah. Happy. Five months, max. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah. Knicks win, absolutely. And, and, and Bills, absolutely. I'll tell you what. If the Expos ever came back. Oh, I'd, 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 you'd be there on opening night with the shoe. I'd go to a subway cart full of sweaty New Yorkers and say, drop them all, (laughs) fill them up. Let's do it. Let's do it. (laughs) Oh man. I'm, I'm saving this footage. Yeah. Okay. Uh, James Beckett asking, do you think Woodley is playing the victim? If so, do you think it's hurting or helping his cause? Essentially, is this playing out in public beneficial to Tyron Woodley? Detrimental? Not, neither, both. What? What is? How do you I'll feel say this. about I this? I thought Rashad Evans's, yep. You know his his advice and maybe his experience was fascinating. I thought Absolutely. his quote of being the first Tyron Woodley was fascinating. The moment he said it, I didn't put two and two together. Yeah. Oh, there was until a time. He said it. There was a time. But he's he's absolutely right. Um, I do think that there is a method to Tyron Woodley's madness, and I was watching because you know when, when I when I announced him for the show, it's like oh, cry baby Woodley, and yeah. then I watched the numbers and they're going up. People want to hear what he have to, what he has to say. He challenges Even Dana when White and cry baby whiner this and There's, that. Yep. This is who he has become, and um, you know we'll see what happens with his next fight if it is RDA. The key is not to have people feel like they don't care about you, like they're apathetic yep. towards you. I don't know. I think people care about him. Maybe not in the best way, but they care. But Maybe they want to get him here. Get, I mean, it it really started. <sighs> I mean, it, 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 Did, I don't know if it he, started with 201, but right. You remember like a second after he beat Robbie Lawler, he's talking about um, Nick Diaz, yeah. about George St. Pierre, and right off the bat, Dana White's like, what, what are you talking about? And he is right. He is fighting the number one contender. Every single thing he said on the show today, yeah. you, you can't argue with yeah. him. Can't, he's, he's telling and so the truth. why he's begrudge him facts. for trying to go out and get the fight? And by the way, he was offered the fight, and Nate Diaz was offered the fight. He was offered the fight by one of the most influential and powerful people in that company. Dana never says his name for some weird reason, but Hunter Campbell is the quote-unquote lawyer that was involved in those talks. He is the general counsel of the UFC. All the big fights that are being made these days, all of them, he is involved. He is not just some guy picking up the phone and calling up Nate Diaz and saying, hey, what about this fight? He's a power player in that company. He is a very important part of that company. He has called himself the Lorenzo to Dana White's Dana White, if you get what I'm saying, with mm-hmm. Lorenzo leaving. So he's not just some lawyer. Um, and, and quite frankly, he deserves you know some respect. Um, he's getting deals done. So the fight was offered. It's real. It is real. We'll see if they... You know, one fight I will say, and I'm not trying to take away from Tyron Shine, but one fight that is not being talked about that I feel like is the most logical fight right now for the UFC is George St. Pierre versus Nate Diaz. There's no belt attached. There's no rankings nonsense attached. There's no meritocracy nonsense attached. There's a legit story there. Nate's brother lost to GSP in a fight that was somewhat controversial because Nick says that, you know, he, he thought that he was like drugged beforehand. He thought GSP didn't make weight. Here's Nate Diaz. Now the, 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 the star Diaz brother, that's a money fight. That's a fight that does over a million clearly with GSP returning. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that might be something they need to explore. And I'm, I'm quite frankly surprised that Nate is barking up the tyrant tree as opposed to the GSP tree, because by the way, GSP gets him to Connor too. Don't you yeah. feel like that's 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 a no-brainer? The only th- reason I could think that it's not even in consideration is that you're using two heavy hitters you, that you might want to oh, keep man, separate. This is what and, you need to do. But yeah, I mean, I, I like that. Two guys who are just not really in the rankings conversation yeah. and just looking for a big fight. And there's a story, and yep. they're both once like they fought at 170. It's not like you're forcing anything. There's yep. it brings Nick back into the story because you know he will reemerge. I mean, yep. this is money. Let's go. Okay. Let's assume that Nate is out of the conversation now. Yeah. 
Who deserves the shot at Tyron? RDA. This question from Josh Reyes. RDA, Covington? Is Covington even still in the picture? Does I mean, he have a, does he have a horse very, in the It's race? very is clear he... that Dana White wants RDA. By the way, it was interesting that, that Tyron didn't want to say Covington's name when he talked about April 7th. Do you notice that? The fight he was offered, that he didn't want to say the guy's name, it's Covington. But um, So I think it just comes down to timing. But in the end, I'll say this. A win over Maya, as Covington did, especially in Brazil, I think holds a little more merit than the win over Robbie, right? But I don't know. Maybe Covington should get one more. It's a tough one. I, could, I couldn't argue with either. Yeah. I think both are deserving challengers. Right. Um, and I think RDA is fresher in people's minds. So that's that's definitely influencing the... Uh, I, I also feel like the Covington fight has lost a little bit of that momentum. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, th- I think it's lost it. Now, Covington, God bless him, is... is Trying to keep it alive with the Nyquil wrestling. Um, yeah, but it's a stuff. little bit forced. Or Tyquil, sorry. It's a little bit forced. Uh, that describes everything about Colby Covington. Mm, everything yeah. is a little I didn't bit forced. I feel like the other stuff was forced, but this feels like oh. it's a little, like the wrestling stuff. I didn't. All of it. Yeah. All of it's been forced. All right. Um, but I think RDA will eventually well get done. a shot. Former champion. We'll see. And Tyron said on the show he, he was willing to take that fight. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Mid offered. Let's get said. it done. Uh, what's your take on Jimmy Smith taking on some responsibilities that were once only done by Joe Rogan? We've seen him in the promos now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seen him commenting over. I thought he did that... a phenomenal job. I thought yep. he was um, he was flawless. He was seamless. He is very good at breaking things down for the layman. He is very good at breaking things down in a very easy to digest way. Um, he talks about the round, the scoring, who he thinks. Yep. Like he's just very good at his job. He is just really good. It's a phenomenal pickup. This needs to be said more. John Anik has worked with at least 10 different color analysts at this point, and he never misses a beat. And we take that for granted because there is a chemistry that needs to build. It's a long show. And he has a relationship with Jimmy, and I think we saw a bit of that come through. I thought he was really comfortable with Jimmy. I thought the tandem, yeah. I, I, I think that might be one of their best tandems. It, 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 it really felt, is. It, like, it felt like old friends. It was really yeah. good. Jimmy, to me, is the heir apparent to Joe Rogan. Eventually, Joe is going to move on. Um, he's doing less. He's doing less international shows. He wasn't doing this one. If that's the guy, they could do a lot worse. In fact, he's probably the best guy. Um, he's just really good at breaking things down. He does it in an easy way. He's he's very insightful. He can do the post-fight interviews, which I, I, I've always felt that seeing the play-by-play guy do the post-fight interviews is weird. I feel like it should be Jimmy. He's a he's an ex-fighter. Eventually, I think they'll transition to that. It takes less um, you know, responsibilities for 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 Anik, take something off his plate. Um they they it's, hit a home it's run. It's more common anyway. And, it's, it's and already... I had someone from Bellator say to me, I think it's so funny to see all you guys go gaga over Jimmy. Um he's been doing this for us for what, like eight or nine years, whatever it was, maybe less. And it's not that we appreciate it, but just seeing how he's transitioned so well effortlessly how comfortable he is there and just playing to a bigger audience, it's notable. It is notable. Not to say that he wasn't doing the same job with Bellator, good job with Bellator. He, it's, it's notable. It's very notable and uh, it's commendable. Yep. Last question. Okay. Where is the amazing Roy McDonald bobblehead? Oh. That figure is the best merch, sports merch I've ever seen. It is. Or is it locked in a safe glass box so no one can touch it? Never mind the steel. Before you answer, yep. let, let's just give another plug yep. to the to the guys at Plastic Cell, yep. um, to Danny Tran and his brother, um, who killed it. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. I think it's actually available, limited uh, quantities available for order right it now. It is. I, I was actually going to say that out. because Roy just posted this a day ago. Yeah. It's available at Plastic Cell, so that's two Cs, dot bigcartel.com. Yep. The second I got that thing... I ran home and my kids play with it. Like my son Walter was playing with it yesterday. What? I was very worried about it. I have, Bad I have a, a couple things in in this sort of makeshift office that I have at home, and uh, they're just they think that it's real blood. I told them that they use real blood. They're blown away by it. I couldn't stop looking at it. I couldn't when I brought it home and I showed it to my wife. I just couldn't stop staring at it. It is without a doubt the greatest piece of MMA memorabilia, if you want to call it that, figurine, whatever it is that has ever been created. I wish those guys would do more. Like, could you imagine what they could do with some of like? It's a, I think they've done some MMA in the past, yeah. and I think the attention they're getting for this will probably. But but see, like round five is cool. Those were cool. 
a little generic. But what's great about this one is it's, it's an iconic moment. You know what I mean? Yes. But you have to consider the differences of scale, right? Round five was mass producing figures. Oh, one hundred percent. They they're doing these individual. But what I love so about this it, iteration it, it, is it, a, it, it's it's sort of like a snapshot of an amazing moment and an amazing yep. fight, and not even a fight that Rory won. That's the most amazing part about it that he yep. celebrated and he didn't even win the fight. You know what I'm saying? It's the Robbie. I mean, you Lawler could have fight. done Robbie Lawler yeah. with the lip hanging off. Oh, there's a million of them. Could you imagine that one? That's a great one. Could you imagine yep. that? Um, James Thompson with his ear exploded. I mean, the list goes on and on. So all of it, for, I feel like there's a theme here. All of it is for you as the gore. Like, uh, can we can we rewind for a second? I just you told your kids it was real blood. Just for fun. What's wrong just with for you? Kicks. My 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 daughter liked it. They like it's fun. <laughs> it's real blood. I wanted to see their reaction, but no, those guys are amazing. Plastic Cell, kudos yeah. to you. Shout and out. I just you know we've been through this. I mean, we're, I don't even know. Oh, there it is. The the Anderson Silva watch, which is no longer with us. Although I do appreciate whoever did this, put Anderson put Silva an on it. it. I mean, that's a nice little touch right there. Uh, but a couple of things, you know, my, where's my Bob Sapp CD? Um, there's a few things. Look, the, the these things have a life. They have a <laughs> life expectancy. Right. And sometimes they, you know what, Ariel? They went to a farm. They went to a farm. They went, they went where they, they, they ship off those, uh, like, Buffalo Bills Super Bowl champions. No one knows where they no, go. No, those, well, those go to... Uh, Third world countries, I believe. Yeah. Like the the Patriots. Where's Joe? Right. Is Joe here? The Patriots yeah, yeah, yeah. uh T shirts go to go to third world countries that they print up and donate them. Which I'm it's nice. Yeah. With. Um that's it. Okay. We're done. All right. We're out of here. Thank you. God bless. Salam alaikum. Thank you very much. Austin, you can hit my music. We are out of time. We have stayed far too long. My buttocks is numb. I haven't stood up in five hours and twenty four minutes. And uh, it's time to go home. But we've had a great time. UFC 221 is in the books. What else happened? James Gallagher's back. As I said, John Dotson, Pedro Munoz rebooked. Alexi Olenek against uh, Junior Albini, UFC 224. That was booked. Michelle Watterson against Courtney Casey. That's going down in uh, Glendale. How about Aljamain Sterling and Brett Johns in Atlantic City? Uh, Tiago Santos and Dave Branch, too. Uh, they are talking about CM Punk and Mike Jackson, which we talked about on this program last week. So we'll see if that comes to fruition. And of course, UFC Austin is this Sunday. Bellator is Friday. Also, our guy Jose Torres fighting for Titan FC on Friday. The Austin card is a great one on Sunday. We'll be back on Monday to talk about that. But uh, Derek Lewis, Sage Northcutt, the Yancey Madero's fight, James Vick all fired up. So much going on. Uh, and of course, we'll have much to discuss on next Monday's show. I do believe it's President's Day, so we'll be honoring our presidents on next Monday's show. For now, we shall say goodbye. Thank you very much to everyone who tuned in. Thank you very much to everyone who stopped by. Thank you very much to Frankie Edgar for stopping by. Best of luck to him on March 3rd, UFC 222 against Brian Ortega. Thank you to both Roy Nelson, Matt Mitrione, and Mike Goldberg for stopping by. Amazing having them here. And thank you to Bellator for hooking that up as well. Thank you very much to Tyron Woodley. Good luck to him with that meeting with Dana White. Thank you very much to Rashad Evans. Good luck to Henry Cejudo. And of course, good luck to one Jose Torres as he defends his flyweight title on Friday. Back next week, same time and place until they say peace. Somebody out.